Want to make sure you never miss a new release from the official Creepypasta.com YouTube channel again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. I live alone in a one-bedroom apartment, so can anyone tell me why there was a woman sitting on my couch watching TV? I was in my room getting some work done when I had gotten a bit hungry and planned on walking to the kitchen to get some leftover Chinese food. My kitchen sits next to the living room, and as soon as I stepped into the dark hallway, I noticed the television was on. I know I never stopped to watch anything on it, so this was an immediate red flag. Thinking that maybe it was updating, or maybe Alexa had switched it on by mistake, I walked over to turn it off, but my heart dropped when I saw a woman with oily black hair sitting on my couch watching it. For a moment, I was confused, because I know there was no one here when I walked in, and I knew all the doors and windows were locked. From the time I came home, I hadn't heard anyone break in, so how the hell could a person be sitting there? After the confusion passed, I wanted to walk forward and ask what the hell she was doing in my house, but something screamed that that would be a grave mistake. If anyone has ever experienced sleep paralysis, that's what the feeling was like. I told my body to move, but the primal part of my brain refused vehemently. I slowly crept back inside my room and just waited in silence. At this point, I know you're already screaming at me to call the cops, and trust me, I wanted to. Nothing at that moment would have made me feel better than to have one or two armed police officers there to deal with her so that I didn't have to. But if I'm being honest, I didn't want her to hear me talking. If she had walked to my room, I'd be trapped. And at that moment, I felt like that'd be a nightmare. After waiting for half an hour in silence, I mustered up enough courage to at least observe and see what she was up to. Forcing myself up, I cracked the door open just enough to get a clear view of the hallway and look at where she was sitting. If I didn't know any better, I'd have thought she had legitimately just stumbled into the wrong house and was relaxing like any normal person, but something was… off. It almost looked as if she was slumped forward on the couch. Part of me wanted to believe that she was sleeping, but what I saw next shattered all hope of that. She reached a disgustingly long arm towards the door and unlocked it from her seated position with ease. I haven't measured yet, but eyeballing the distance from my couch to the door, it had to be at least eight or nine feet away on the low end. She slowly stood up and made a clumsy effort to walk towards it. Her body was horrifying. She was tall, uncomfortably so. If I had to guess, I'd say she was maybe over nine feet, with arms that touched the ground and dragged behind her. Her hands each sported roughly eleven fingers that had to be around a foot in length. From what I remember, she was completely naked, with sagging skin that hung loosely off her extremely thin body. She was also paler than I thought possible. Her skin appeared almost grey, and if I didn't know any better, I'd think her skin belonged to that of someone recently deceased. She didn't move gracefully. She dragged her massive body towards the door and raised her long arm towards the doorknob to pull it open. It almost looked like she had to break her own bones to complete the movement, but as she pulled the door open and moved a spindly leg outside, she stopped. My blood ran cold as she slowly turned her head towards me, and I caught a glimpse of her face. I wanted to scream when I didn't see any eyes, just a puffy exterior with sagging eye holes and a mouth with long, rubbery lips that drooped past her shoulders in a permanent look of anguish. I didn't know if she saw me or if she even had the capability to. All I remember was her turning her head back outside and leaving my home. She shut the door behind her and I was left in silence with my heart pumping faster than it ever did. I rushed outside with my phone to see if I could catch her on video, 
And I... I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd just closed the door and gone to sleep, or gotten drunk and tried to pass the whole thing off as a fucked up nightmare. But what I saw was... I know it was real. I looked outside in the cold dark, and I saw her hanging off the side of the building like a fucking spider. The window of the person above me was open. She was fishing inside, and after a few seconds of searching, she pulled out their son. Her hand was completely wrapped around the head, and I couldn't tell if they were alive or dead by the time she slinked off into the darkness with the young boy. I had caught it all on video. I must have watched that video a hundred times before deleting it. I mean, what the fuck was I supposed to do with it? Do you think the police would believe it's a real piece of evidence? Even if they did, what the hell could they do? And as a parent, are you better off thinking that your kid ran away, or knowing that it was taken by an entity that we can't even begin to comprehend? At least with the former, you have hope that maybe you'll see them again. I just couldn't bring myself to bring up such a crazy notion to a grieving family. Or worse, have them believe me and go looking for something that no one should ever try and find. I knew as long as I kept it, I'd be tempted to watch it, and every time I watched it, I'd be driven further into madness. There have been more stories of kids missing as of late. I've even heard some rumours about pets going missing from people's homes. Surprisingly enough, I even heard a story about a full-grown man disappearing. He was never seen again, with absolutely no trace of where he went or why he left. The only thing suggesting any kind of outside force was an open window, and a few strands of hair police couldn't match any DNA to. This has taken quite a toll on my life. I tried to find info on this thing, but as far as I know, there's nothing. If anyone out there has had a similar experience, please tell your story or share images of the thing if you have them. I just want to know I'm not crazy. I'm quitting my job tomorrow and staying with my brother on the other side of the country. There's no fucking way I'm sticking around that thing more than I need to. I don't plan on being here much longer, but last night I heard knocking at my door. I know the next time I see it, I won't be telling a story afterward. But I also know I'm building this whole damn apartment down with me.